Well, what are first order systems? These are the simplest form of dynamical systems. In this lecture, we will introduce first order systems. We will discuss about their impulse, step, and frequency responses. But first off, what is a first order system? It is a dynamical system, a linear dynamical system, which can be described by a transfer function of the following form k over tau s plus 1, where k and tau are positive coefficients. k is called the static gain of the system and tau is the time constant. A simple example of a first order system is this series RL circuit with the input variable the voltage across it and output variable the current that runs through it. Think of these are the co as the cause and effect. So V is the cause and I is the effect. We know that the impedances of these two elements are R and LS. We can combine them into a single impedance of value R plus LS. And according to the definition of impedance, which is voltage over current, we have V over I is equal to R plus LS. Now we're looking, however, for the transfer function G which is the output over the input, that is I over V, current over voltage. And that is simply 1 over R plus LS. Now, is that a first order system? And if it is, what is the static gain and what is its time constant? So if we divide both the numerator and the denominator by R, and we do that so that we have 1 in the denominator, the constant term in the denominator must be 1, then we end up with uh, this form uh, for our transfer function. This is indeed the first order system with static gain k, which is equal to 1 over r, and time constant tau, which is L over r. Let's start by discussing the impulse response of um, first order systems. But before we derive the impulse response itself, we can find, first of all, its final and initial values. Let's find the final value first. The impulse response in the S domain is given simply by the transfer function of the system. The impulse response coincides with the transfer function, and this is k over tau s plus 1. We can use the final val value theorem here because the poles of uh, this function are just minus 1 over tau. We have only negative poles and we can apply the final value theorem, according to which the final value of the output, the final value of x, x at, at infinity, is equal to the limit as s goes to 0 plus of s times x of s. And if we plug in here x of s, which is k over tau s plus 1, we'll see that the final value is equal to 0. Let's have a look now at the initial value. What is the initial value of the system response? Likewise, we can apply the initial value theorem to find x at 0 plus. Now, this is equal to the limit as s goes to infinity of s times x of s, which is the limit of ks over tau s plus 1. And it is easy to see that this is k over tau. This is a finite number, therefore, we will accept it. If this were equal to infinity, in some other problem, we might end up with an, an infinite limit here, then we shouldn't accept it. The initial value theorem can only be used so long as uh, the result of this limit is finite. The impulse response of a dynamical system is nothing but the inverse Laplace transform of uh, its transfer function. So it is x of t is equal to the inverse Laplace of g, where g is k over tau s plus 1. Now, we need to find that inverse Laplace. Let's first of all move k outside the inverse Laplace transform. We can do that because the inverse Laplace is a linear uh, operator, so k goes outside. Next, we can have tau as a common factor in the denominator. And we can then move tau outside. So we have k over tau times the inverse Laplace transform of 1 over s plus 1 over tau. Now this is um, a good formulation 
because the inverse Laplace transform of 1 over s plus a constant is known, and this is the exponential of minus t over tau. So the inverse Laplace transform of a first order system is k over tau times the exponential of minus t over tau. And this is defined, of course, for all uh, non-negative times t. And here we see the impulse response of uh, a first order system with k equals 1 and for two different values of tau. We see that for a smaller tau, for a smaller time constant, the response becomes steeper and tends to converge to zero faster. So this much about the impulse response. Let's have a look now at the step response, which is a little more interesting. Recall that the step response, what we mean when we say step response, is the response of a dynamical system when the input is a Heaviside function with parameter zero. Or you can say that it is the response of the system when the input is constant throughout all positive numbers and is equal to one. Then x of s, the step response, is g of s over s. In this case, it is k over s times tau s plus one. Note here that the poles of this x uppercase of s are just zero and minus one over t. Keep that in mind. We have two poles. One is zero and the second one is minus one over t. Now again, before we determine the step response, before we take the inverse Laplace transform on this function, let us determine the final value of the step response. Let's see if we can use the final value theorem. Well, the poles are just zero and minus one over s, so we are allowed to use the final value theorem, and we will do so. So here we take x at infinity is equal to the limit as s goes to zero plus of s times x of s, and we substitute x of s with k over s tau s plus 1. The s in the numerator and the s in the denominator cancel out each other, and we see easily, if you simply put there s equals 0, then this becomes k. So the final value of the step response of a first order system is equal to k. Again, before we determine the step response, let us try to determine the initial value of x. So what is x at time 0 plus? This is equal to the limit of s times x of s as s goes to infinity. Now s goes to infinity, this is from the initial value theorem, which is the limit of ks over s tau s plus 1, and you can easily figure out that this is equal to 0. Now, what about the initial value of the rate of the response? What about the initial rate? What is the value of x dot at 0 plus? We've seen that before. This is the limit of s times the Laplace transform of x dot. And what is that? This is s times x of s. So we have the limit of s squared times x of s. And let's substitute x of s over there. And this is ks squared over s tau s plus 1. And you can verify that this limit is indeed equal to k over tau. Now the step response, we can now, it's time to determine the step response of the system. The step response in the s domain is of course k over s tau s plus 1. This is the transfer function divided by s. We can do a partial fractions expansion, which will be of the form a over s plus b over s plus 1 over tau. You can try this as an exercise. Here you will have to multiply both sides by s times tau s plus 1 and determine the values of a and b. We will not do that here, but it's a good exercise to try. We will determine, if we do that however, that a is equal to k and b is equal to minus k times tau. So this is the partial fractions expansion of the step response of the system. We can then apply the inverse Laplace transform here to find that the step response is k times 1 minus exponential of minus t over tau. 
and this is defined for all non-negative times t. We know three things about the step response. We know the initial value, which is equal to 0, the final value, which is equal to k, and the initial rate, which is k over tau. Now, if we plot the actual step response, we will see that indeed it satisfies all these three properties that we determined prior to determining the step response itself the initial value, the final value, and the initial rate. Here is a step response for two different values of tau and for k, is, uh, for k equal to 1. You can tell that k is equal to 1 because this is the final value, this is clearly the final value of the step response in this plot. You see in both cases, both lines, both for tau equals 1 and for tau equals 0 0.1, converge to 1. They start from 0, they converge to 1, and different values of tau lead to different initial rates. And here is another plot for two different values of k. k is equal to 1 and 0 0.5. Of course, when k is equal to 1, the step response converges to 1 at infinity, and when k is 0 0.5, it goes to 0 0.5. Now, the frequency response of a first-order system. Recall that when we talk about the frequency response, we are talking about the response of the dynamical system to an input which is sinusoidal. It is sine of omega times t. That is in the time domain. In the s domain, we have u of s is omega over s squared plus omega squared. Now, for a first-order system, this means that the response x of s is k over tau s plus 1, this is the transfer function, times the Laplace transform of the input. Now this is important to repeat once again, that given a transfer function, we can determine the output of a dynamical system for absolutely any input, so long as we know its transfer function. And this is such a case. We have an input in the time domain, sine of, sine of omega times t. We know it's Laplace transform, omega over s squared plus omega squared. We multiply these two and we obtain the output, the output of the system. As an exercise, you can try to show that the initial value of uh, the frequency response of a first order system and the initial value of its rate are both equal to zero. You can also try, you can try to show that uh, we cannot apply the final value theorem in this case, of course, because its conditions are not satisfied. The frequency response of a first-order dynamical system turns out to be rather lengthy. We can take the inverse Laplace transform on the output of the system in the S domain and then apply a partial fractions expansion and we will be able to determine this inverse Laplace transform, which is the frequency response. Although it is not worth memorizing this lengthy equation, we can use it to plot the frequency response of such a first-order dynamical system. And it is like that. We can observe a few things. First of all, it is oscillatory. Second, in the beginning, it is not quite sinusoidal, but as time progresses, it tends to become more and more close to a sinusoidal function. At steady state, after a long, long time, the response of the system, the frequency response, can be very, very well approximated by such a sinusoidal function. This is the dashed red line. Let's see why. So this is the frequency response. Let's make a few observations. We see here that the response involves a term of the form sine of omega t plus 5, 0. It is omega times t. It is the same frequency as the input frequency. So the output frequency is the same as the input frequency. And this is very important to remember. The second observation is that we have a decreasing exponential term here, which, when as time goes on, as time progresses, at large times, this will become very, very small. 
So if, if t is large, this can be omitted. So let's suppose now that the time is large and let's omit that. And we will end up with this approximation of the frequency response of the system. Note here that both the amplitude and the phase lag of this approximation depend on omega. In summary, if we excite the first order system with a sinusoidal input of the form A times sine omega t, with a sinusoidal input which has an amplitude A and the frequency omega, then the output will eventually become sinusoidal. After a long time, the output will be approximated by a sinusoidal waveform. And that sinusoidal wave, the steady state frequency response, will have the form A times a term which we denote by R infinity, and we call that the amplitude ratio, times the sine of omega times t plus phi zero, where phi zero is what we call the phase lag of this system. Both R infinity and phi zero depend on the frequency of the input signal. We call X infinity the steady state frequency response of the system. Here is a couple of extremely useful formulas that are worth remembering. The first one is that the amplitude ratio, R infinity, is nothing but the modulus of the transfer function of the system at j omega, where j is the imaginary unit and omega is the frequency of actuation. And the second formula is that the phase lag, phi zero, is the argument of the transfer function of the system at j omega. So the transfer function of the system evaluated at j omega gives a lot of useful information about the frequency response of the system. It gives essentially all important information about the frequency response. The amplitude ratio depends only on the parameters of the system, so the static gain and the time constant, and the frequency of the excitation signal, the frequency of the input signal, that is omega. Note that at very low frequencies, when um, omega is very, very small, then the amplitude ratio is approximately equal to k. On the other hand, for large frequencies, the amplitude ra ratio is approximately zero. As omega goes to infinity, the amplitude ratio goes to zero. In other words, first order systems are low pass filters. So thanks for watching. Uh, this is all about first order systems. We defined this new category of uh, systems with uh, simple transfer functions, which uh, have two parameters, the static gain and time constant. And we discussed briefly how these two parameters affect the qualitative uh, characteristics of the impulse step and frequency response of such systems. Most notably, we gave two very important properties regarding the frequency response of such systems. The frequency response at large times, the so-called steady state frequency response. And these are that the amplitude ratio is equal to the modulus of the transfer function evaluated at j omega, and the phase lag is the argument of the transfer function at j omega. The good news is that we will be able to reuse these formulas uh, on uh, other more general systems. So thank you very much for watching and goodbye.